the chief priests and the elders of the people to counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate to go. And then Judas, which had betrayed him when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned, and that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, Where is that to what is that to us? See thou to it. You see now, old I'm gonna close here uh, for this and then pick it up. So I'm gonna close for the radio stations out there and then pick it up for the rest of us here. <coughs> You've been listening to us this morning on the Liberty Well <laughs> the Liberty Works Radio Network. The Liberty Works Radio Network, 104.3 FM, The Eagle in Tampa and Ocala. And I'm Pastor Ernie Sanders, and we've been coming to you from Doers of the Word Baptist Church at 14781 Sperry Road in Newberry, Ohio. Our phone number, would you like to call us, is 440-338-1367. And to next week, we want to say good morning, God bless, have a blessed Resurrection Sunday, and always, always, Keep fighting the fight! Say, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. Now, see, old Judas, he knew now he was in big trouble. Mm -hmm. he, had, he had decided he was going to be the one, and, and he was, was going to exhort the Lord Jesus to rise it up and putting down the entire Roman army, and then everybody would say about Judas, you did a great job, you're the one that's responsible, you're the one that convinced the Lord to, to rise up and put down the Romans. Hmm. Didn't work that way. And then Judas realized what he had done. Now, what was his hope? The last thing he could do was his hope for forgiveness. But he became the son of perdition, huh? And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, It's not lawful for him to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood. Huh. They ought to know. Yeah. And they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to buy to bury strangers in. Wherefore the field was called the field of blood unto this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeroboam. Jeremiah the prophet saying, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they, of the children of Israel, did value. Zechariah 11, 12 was fulfilled at that time. And gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord appointed me. And Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto them, Now sayest, now, you remember, you know, he said the same thing to Caiaphas. He keeps saying, are, are you the son of God? You know, uh, they kept asking, they kept bringing it up. And now here Pontius Pilate said, are you the king of the Jews? Well, you know what, he is the king of the Jews. In fact, he's the king of kings and lord of lords. But to this very day, he's the only one whose lineage, whose lineage, that would make him the king of the Jews. He was right. the only one in line. Amen. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? And he answered him to never a word, insomuch the governor marveled greatly. Now at the feast the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had it. Then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. The Barabbas was a murderer, he was a thief, he was an insurrectionist. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will you that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. And when he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife went and sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with this with that just man, for I have 
have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. So now, here, remember old Pontius Pilate. They believed in many gods. And of course, one of their gods was none other than Caesar himself. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy <coughs> Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whither are the twain? Will you that I release unto you? And they said, Barabbas. <coughs> Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? And they all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil hath he done? And they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. And when Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but rather a tumult was made, and he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See you to it. That's what a coward does. That's what a coward does. That's what a lot of our politicians of today have done. They have turned away knowing I remember when Jimmy Carter had made the statement that the Bible clearly taught that abortion was wrong, it was murder, but his constituents, the people that elected him, that was their will, and he was going to do their will of the people. Here's a guy that professes himself to be a born-again believer. And you see, to the vast majority of people out there, that makes sense! Those that are lost. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and our children. Well, folks, they got their wish. For 2,000 years, the blood of that innocent man, of the Lord Jesus Christ, have been on the Jews and their children. <clears throat> then released he Barabbas into them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered him and the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed before, knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after they had mocked him, they took the robe off of him and put on his own raiment on him and led him also to crucify. And as they come, they found a man of Serene, Simon, by name. Him they compelled to bear the cross. And when they were coming to a place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull, then gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall, and when he had tasted, therefore, he would not drink. And that then they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. Well, here, that's, if you read Psalm 22, that's what that whole psalm is about, Psalm 22. And sitting down, they washed him there, and set up over his head the accusation written, This is the king of the Jews. Then there were two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Well, it was the one that was on the right hand. Now, in this passage of Scripture, they don't tell you that. Because, you see, each one, as they, they gave account, is, is what they heard. And... So Matthew, as what he saw and gave account of, uh, were the, the two thieves speaking to Jesus. Okay, But if we look in other passages, we see that the thief on the right repented of his sin. Amen. And the Lord Jesus said, you'll be with us today in paradise. Right. The thief on the left, right. well, he went in the other direction. Liberal. Yeah. And there were two thieves confided with him, one on the right and the other on the left. And as they passed by, they reviled, wagging their heads, and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple, and buildest in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. 
Likewise also the chief priest mocked him with the scribes and the elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the Son of God. And the thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same teeth. Well, uh, one did and the other didn't. Mm -hmm. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, <coughs> Eli, Eli, lama sabach thani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, Well, this man calleth for a lie. <laughs> Straight away one of them ran and took his sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave it to drink. The rest said, Let, let be, let's see whether Elias will come to save him. And Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints would slip. Now, this was the first fruit. Now, this, this happened after the Lord Jesus had resurrected, that the graves were opened. And came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto me. And now when the centurion and they that were with him watching, Jesus saw the earthquake. And those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. And many women were there beholding afar off, which <coughs> followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering unto him, among which was Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and, and Joseph and the mother of Zebedee's children. Now when the evening was come, there came a rich man. Well, you know, going back to that, when the graves were opened and they arose and they ascended, they, they were held at, at that time. That were the saints of the Old Testament that were held in Abraham's bosom. The other parts were where they were in hell. And now those that were in Abraham's bosom, they ascended. This is what many people call the first rapture. Okay. Uh, So what we we call it the first fruits, okay, of the rapture when when the main rapture takes place, okay. Uh, well, the whole world will know about it. That's right. Yep. Amen. And when the evening was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. You see, they very conveniently forgot. To notify Joseph, who was a member of the Sanhedrin, that they were having that illegal trial of Jesus. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. And laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock. And he rolled a great storm to the door of the sepulcher and departed. Well, that new tomb that was hewn out of the rock. That was very, very expensive. Just like today in our day, uh, when you have a funeral to bury someone today, it costs a lot of money. And in that case, it would be a very expensive ordeal. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulcher. Now the next day that followed, the day of the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that the deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away, and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead, and to the last error shall be worse than the first. Well, I can guarantee you that thought never came to the minds of the disciples. But they knew what they would do. The Pharisees knew how they thought, huh? These people that were so corrupted. <coughs> so the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, You have a watch, go your way, make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulchre sure. 
sealing the stone, and setting the watch. And next week, we're going to have the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what? Because He lives, we can face tomorrow. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. And with that, we're going to ask a blessing and we'll take up an offering. And Ken, McGill, would you ask an off a blessing over the offering today? Father God, we'd just like to uh, ask your blessing on this offering today, Father God, that, uh, Lord, that uh, not only would the money be used, Lord, in, in a way that you would uh, uh, approve of, Lord, and, and, and choose to have it dispersed, Father God, but also bless the people that are giving, Lord, that uh, they can see your mighty work in, 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 in their lives, and, and Lord, uh, and, and uh, Father, that this money would be, um, again, Father God, used to, to further and, and uplift your name throughout this land and to help those that need it, whether it's in this country or abroad, Lord, that, that we're using, that using it to provide help for those people and pay our bills, Lord, and, 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 uh, and our, um, uh, the rent here also, Father God, whatever, whatever is needed for, Father God. And it's in the name of Jesus we, we thank you for it. For this Lord and, and, and hope it honors you in your name. Amen. Amen. I want you folks to know too, we're being very, very careful. We support a lot of charities. Um, we support the uh, St. Jude's home. We know, well, that's a Catholic home. Listen, 100% of it goes to helping those children. 100%. And that's what we care about. Okay. Oh, well, in fact, here's, here's some of who. Where your money goes, feed the children, pass the salt, which is Coach Dave Dallemeyer, who, who, who supports this ministry. The, uh, I don't know how many times. Uh, of course, feed the children. Uh, the money all goes to the children. St. Jude's Children Home. We check that out. 100% goes to the children. The disabled American veterans. 100% of the money. The, the Salvation Army. About 98%. Okay. Bible Baptist Mission, 100%. Uh, Citizens for Community Values, 100% uh, goes into the ministry. Uh, food for the Poor, again. The Christian Action Network, they, are, they do a tremendous job of warning people about the growing Islam. They're the ones that made those DVDs that we showed you before about uh, the growing threat of Islam here. Uh, on and on and on. Uh, Joe County Right to Life, okay. Uh, created Equal and uh, Life Dynamics. All of them uh, work on a very, very limited. Uh, all the money goes right into saving babies. So uh, there's where some of your money goes when you when you tie it up here. Okay. I haven't gotten a leer jet yet. <laughs> <laughs> I've looked at a couple, but, uh, you know, these prosperity preachers were occupying them. So, anyhow, with that, yeah, let's have some words of praise. Who has some words of praise today for us? Yes? Our mom is doing better. As yeah. good as can be expected. It was good to be at her birthday party. Yeah, okay. she needed that. She was yeah. glad we all came. I know, she was... So cute with that neck brace up. That neck brace, it looks like it stretches her neck out. And she, she has to turn like this. Or she can't go, she can't turn her head. But uh, it won't, hopefully it should be here soon. Maybe she can, maybe next week. Mm -mm. You don't think so? Nope. She's not, she's not even ready for visitors yet. Like her brothers to come out. Well. Not ready for that yet. Well, we start, tell her we, we certainly do miss her. She knows that. We will. You know, what other words of praise do we have? Yes? I got a healing on my uh, hand. I woke up one day and uh, there was like a red spot the size of a quarter. And of course I've had skin cancer a couple times. And uh, I thought it was just the fungus among us, you know, deal. But it started itching and spreading. Uh, and I finally got in to see a skin doctor and... Uh, 
it turned out to be uh, eczema and uh, some other, you know, dry skin is really what it was. Wow, well, praise the Lord for that, huh? Right. Skin cancer is a negative. No, you don't want to go through that procedure. Amen. Do you have your hand up back there? Yep. Well, what's your word of praise? Yesterday. Now, you remember uh, this uh, mega church on Union Square, E79? Yeah. I went. See, the Lord had, had led me uh, to, to uh, talk to this uh, pastor. I, I forget his name. I said, uh, how come you ain't going out to the plaza where Planned Parenthood is right uh and you, you know, it's hiding like between uh, the two buildings in, in the plaza and everything. And he was saying, well, I got uh, all the signs and stuff for it and, 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 and everything. And, uh, and, you know, I was just, uh, uh, I mean, I wasn't, you know, I was just, uh, you know, asking him a question. And, 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 and I told him, uh, do you know that you are, are serving two masters? The Bible says you should not serve two masters. Right. Well, here, now what Doug is talking about is this. That church square, they got about, what, four or five churches over there? Yeah. And, uh, and so they called me, the black pastors called me, and asked me if I would bring our people over there because they opened a planned predator's office over there. Wow. And I said, no, you do it yourself. You're supposed to go out there and be doers of the word. And I said, you know, we'll show you how to do it, but we're not going to do it for you. And that's the shame of you, the shame of you, that, you, that you're that you calling us and asking us when you should be out there doing that yourself. But uh, can you imagine that, huh? Sure, I can imagine it. I got, I got Darren Dewell across the street when he was to come. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, that's when I, I shamed him on the radio. I went on the radio and I shamed him on the radio for that. Uh, so, yeah, you sure did. They need to be, you know, the scripture says, be you doers of the word. And, you know, Proverbs chapter 24, verse 10, 11, and 12. That's right. That's right. You know, I have these prissy preachers say, well, you know, you're called to that, Pastor. You're called to that. I'm not called to that. As well, how, how is it that you get uh, you get called just to do the easy things? Just to, they say, we're called just to pray. <laughs> okay. I looked in there, I couldn't see my name in there. So if, you, if I don't see my name in there, that means that it applies to everybody, doesn't it? That's right. Well, that's when you go to Second Chronicles 7, 14, and so there's three things you're called to do. You know, the last one's get out and do something. Right. It's called service. Yep. The Lord calls you to service, folks. So there you go. See, it works this way. You can believe, you're free to believe whatever you want to believe, but here's what you will believe. Uh, you're going to believe that... Uh, when you were called to service and you failed, you wish you could undo that. Because you're either going to be a doer of the word, or as it says, uh, deceive, no, or you're not going to be a doer of the word, as the Bible says, deceiving yourself. James 2.18, show me your salvation without your works, I'll show you my salvation by my works. That's what it says, and that's what it means. Amen. So, all right, what other words of praise do we have? Yes, Grandma. I want to thank everybody in this congregation and pass the word on to those who are not here today that I am taking a good bit of you 